I'm going to be detailing a little bit more of my merchant stuff. The walker, as it stands now, is fairly large, so I probably won't bother exploring every nook and cranny. Not yet, at least. The cockpit, or the bridge, seems like a good place to start, though. I had a top-down sketch from the last video, so I went mostly off that. I like the idea of his walker being a mix of the stuff he finds and collects. Things that he liked enough to keep instead of selling. Maybe this chair is some sort of modified throne, or something else fancy. But not everything is going to be valuable, necessarily. Well, some stuff I've been kind of thinking about is... You know, for this channel, do I want it to be kind of a thing where I present some of my best stuff and show kind of my process leading up to my best stuff? Or do I want it to be a lot about the struggles as well? Originally, the intent was going to be the struggles, but I'm just kind of reconsidering. And one of the things that's making me think about that is, I don't know, in the comments down below, let me know, should I have some videos where I'm showing some of the process of me learning, let's say, anatomy or just poses when it comes to people and perspective even, things like that, just studying, the process of me studying. You know, it could be time lapse with voiceover like this, or it could be, you know, live streams just condensed and stuff like that, or highlights of what I've learned and stuff like that. It could just be me going down my notes that I've taken about stuff like that. But yeah, let me know. Would you be interested in seeing some of the learning and studying of things like that? I'm having a hard time describing the style I want to go for for this. Is the walker nice and neat? Some full product that he purchased somewhere? Or is this more of like a vehicle that was cobbled together over the years? Did he build it himself? Also, based on this perspective drawing I'm doing, it's starting to be pretty large, like I said. But it's erring on the side of being colossal, compared to, again, going back to the top-down sketch that I had. The cockpit, compared to the rest of it, is pretty tiny. I find a lot of times that perspective can really help in... Well, first of all, it obviously helps you kind of more mathematically figure out where stuff actually goes, especially with this top-down view that I have next to it. But also just in general, if you're sketching and you have something like in perspective, your brain just comes up with new ideas just as you... And I like to do that sometimes. I like to just almost scribble. I was actually listening to a Draftsman podcast about scribbling today, and they were talking about that just scribbling sometimes just to come up with your ideas and kind of just brainstorming on the page and then that's kind of some of what brought a lot of this about is just all right let me just go for it and then cleaning it up and here i'm doing some i wouldn't call it line art i'm i would say it's more just defining it over the sketch because the sketch is obviously very messy you can't necessarily i think i do need to get better about that about the sketch being messy but you can't necessarily tell what exactly is happening so i'm trying to more define the shapes and again this isn't an illustration right now not at this point this is just coming up with a concept and fleshing it out a little more to where if i did want to do an illustration i could just go off of this and be pretty far ahead I showed some of the a more detailed look at some of the control panels and actually since doing this I did come up with a few more ideas you know so he has this table to the side that he keeps his map I did like the idea of having a glass floor right there that he could actually kind of look down because if you're this high up in the air again depending on how big it is it's gonna be kind of awkward to figure out what's underneath you
I'm kind of just dealing mostly with values right now when I've been drawing and sketching things and such. Color, you know, I can figure out color. My color theory isn't amazing. I naturally maybe have a predisposition to it, but I definitely need to study it a lot more. And for now, I'm really just getting the idea of what this looks like across. And maybe when I go to an illustration um, later on, I can start implementing color. But here, I'm just trying to get some of the rough feeling of it. You know, maybe having some wood flooring here or some type of paneling, maybe not wood, but it could be wood. There's definitely wood in this world. Like I said, I don't think I want to necessarily spend a ton of time showing every little nook and cranny. So I have somewhere in my notes, there's more of the animal section of this walker. And he has various pets, you could say. So he has some kind of, first of all, here I'm drawing, I'm trying to design some sort of mount. Kind of a beast of burden sometimes, but more, more as a horse equivalent. Um, so he just rides around sometimes if he would prefer that over, let's say, um, some other vehicle. Using this wolf and this moose here as a reference. Because I kind of wanted to go for a larger animal, but not as exactly as rigid looking as a moose. So I like what I came up with there with the dripping down into this weird ghost-like mask. I kind of like that little design there. Uh, it makes it look a little more gentle, but not too gentle. It makes it look a little weird, but not as weird as that first little sketch of the head I did. I didn't really like that, maybe for some other creature, but not this one. Fairly large creature, maybe a little longer than I portrayed him here, but I definitely like um, most of the build, these big claws there he's got, and these horns sticking out the side. And then here, I, I was thinking, I remembered I had this sketch from a long time ago, actually. It was like this bird-lizard creature mix. I decided maybe I'll use this as an alternate. Maybe I'll compare these two, see which mount I like better. And eventually I kind of decided, you know, this was starting to be a little skinnier and stuff. And I did have on the list of things to design a sort of dog-like companion. So I did maybe like the idea of that. You can see you're making some notes of comparing them side by side and you know putting beak mask next to them and just saying like all right what how do they size up so i decided this guy was going to be fairly large compared to this guy at least twice the height just on the back and almost the i think maybe the height of beak mask maybe a little taller you know to the to the top of the back This other guy is starting to look more like some equivalent of some 
raptor thing, but I kind of want to try out the idea of having him be large dog sized. And so just able to help out with a bunch of different things and be kind of, you know, a companion in multiple ways, be kind of a little bit of security, a little bit of whatever else. Although I do have another security guard type animal planned that'll do at some point. But yeah, so here we go. We got Big Mask's mount checked off and his dog-like companion checked off, at least for now. <laughs>